Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, July 28. Local Government and Community Development Minister Noel R. Scott is appealing to persons to stop lighting fires outside as the continued drought increases the chances of these fires raging out of control. The minister made the timely reminder at a recent function in Clarendon. Whatever the reason, we would like to say that at this time it is irresponsible for persons to go out and light fires. Just this weekend, firefighters in St. Andrew were called to respond to a major bushfire in the Jackson and Westphalia communities. The blaze was reportedly contained early Monday morning, but the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management is again advising persons to take steps to prevent bushfires. That includes not lighting fires in open spaces, keeping matches and naked flames out of the reach of children, and ensuring that cigarettes are completely put out before disposal. Persons should call the nearest fire brigade immediately to report any fires in their area. Meanwhile, the Maypen Fire Station has received a new state-of-the-art fire truck that comes with special features that make it suitable to deal with the parish's terrain. The fire truck is among three which the government recently bought at a cost of $133 million. Local Government and Community Development Minister Noel R. Scott says it shows government's commitment to improving the fire brigade's capacity to respond to fires. I want to say that we have already ordered three more and we are getting two from the Japanese. So come next year we are going to have an additional three units. I want also to say that we have, have authorized emergency expenditure for us to upgrade those other units that we have that needs our repair. The new unit for Clarendon has hydraulic ramps and generators and is capable of driving and pumping water at the same time at a discharge rate of 700 gallons per minute. The first set of tablets on the government's $1.4 billion Tablets in Schools pilot project were presented to teachers at seven institutions last week. The 184 tablets are currently being used to train teachers ahead of the full rollout of the program in September. We have very high expectations in terms of the impact that this pro project will have on both the teachers and the students and in fact the communities because each school will become a hotspot and persons in the communities will be able to access the internet if they have devices that are so enabled. And the students will be also in a position where they'll take these tablets home so their families can also become computer literate. During the recent handing over ceremony at the Alpha Academy, Education Minister Reverend Wanol Thwaite said the project was taking instruction and learning in schools to a new dimension. It brings Jamaican students uh, to global standards. Tertiary institutions are being urged to provide the training needed to prepare workers for jobs within a logistics-centered economy. Industry Minister Anthony Hilton says training the local workforce to world-class standards is critical to the development of the special economic zones which are central to the success of the Jamaica Global Logistics Sub-Initiative. The charge, therefore, is for our tertiary institutions, which are already engaged through the Education Committee of the Logistics Sub-Task Force, to find out the needs of the companies or sectors that will utilize the special economic zones, and to provide the relevant courses or training not only at the existing campuses, but hear this, but also the possibility of satellite facilities within the special economic zones. The minister was speaking at the University of Technology's recent logistics hub panel discussion. Entrepreneurs are being advised to use the wide range of government services available to help advance their businesses. Industry State Minister Sharon Folks Abrams points out that training and technical support are being provided through the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, and other key agencies such as the Heart Trust NTA. She says these are pivotal to the growth and viability of micro, small, and medium sized enterprises. The JBDC offers support such as business advisory services, technical services, business incubation, marketing assistance, financial support services, and Heart NTA offers support such as entrepreneurship skills development, enterprise development services, pre-incubation training, and business incubation. The state minister was speaking at the recent Young Entrepreneurs Association of Jamaica's quarterly forum. And finally, emancipation and independence celebrations were officially kicked into high gear at this weekend's Thanksgiving service held at the Church of the Open Bible in Kingston. The multi-denominational service was attended by a wide cross-section of persons, including government ministers and members of the parliamentary opposition. 
Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna implored citizens to give thanks for Jamaica and the many tribulations and triumphs that have shaped the nation. She said the country had much for which to be proud and called for the redoubling of efforts to build the country. Let us do our best for Jamaica that the generations that will come will say and proudly do so, this is Jamaica, my Jamaica. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching.